Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, this is the next set of, on the video. Uh, we're making the outer of the DB killer. These are all the parts uh, that we're gonna make next. Uh, there's a couple of hundred here, so there's quite a lot to do. Uh, again, we're over at the end former. What we've got here is a jig. All it does, pushes that down, so that we, all we're gonna do is end form, re reduce this end down. That gives us a measurement of exactly the same. This is using a bit of perforated tube so that I can see that this is all the way sat down to the bottom of my jig and it's just nice and easy to handle and easy to use. So we'll bring the machine all the way forward and I'll just rotate. You just need to take it in like that and pull that out. Just go once and that's done. What we use is a little bit of lube on the inside of here, on every one. Because we're reducing down so much, because it's gonna reduce down from this size right the way down to about 32 millimeters, we, we, we want it to nice and slide uh, and not to split or anything to happen to the tube. So basically that's what it does on its first tool. Each set of these tools, basically only move around five millimeters so each time if you want to reduce more than five millimeters we've got this tube tool we go to the next tool the next tool and so on so you, you might have three or four tooling changes for one part just to get that reduced down this is the way that we do it there are obviously different ways of doing it you can make a pressing uh, which is quite expensive on press tools or you can do it this way uh, there are some other ways of doing it. This is just the way that we do it and the way that we've always done it. So, just once more, put that in. All the way, and there we have the first stage of that part. Sorry, man. So that will size that exactly the same every time. So we get a uniform size all the way through our parts. Quite okay, we've done the first stage. This is all, the, all these are ready now for the first stage. Taken them down five millimeters. I'm gonna swap the tool in now to go down to the next stage. If you wanna follow me, I'll do a tooling change and show you what's involved. Okay, this is the uh, this is the two press tools. If you come in here nice and close so we can see what's going on. We have an internal tool and an external tool. The external tool stays there all the time. What I'm gonna do is move this, move that out. That's gonna come out. So, this is basically the ram. This is just a basic ram. Come in here and see here. This is basically the ram. It comes forwards and it goes backwards. And this is why I can leave it on while I do a tooling change. So we just drop that onto there. We get the next set of tools, which is this one. Take that down. And just take that down. That's our second stage. That's our first stage, and if you notice the difference, that's how much it's taking it down. This is what we want for our decibel killer. What we want here, we want this to slip inside there nice and easily. Which, uh, it's kind of doing. Not, not quite as easily as I'd like, so we just back it off on our measurement here. Go again. So that's how I want it to slide in and out, just so it's nice and easy to 
to work so that when we weld these together it's a lot easier to do. Okay, so obviously next stage, all the way through all of these again, onto, onto this tool, then we can work on the other side. Okay, so we'll start, we'll get these done and come back once we've finished this section. Now we've done our reduction side, we need to do our expansion. So with the first one, obviously we need to make our size so that we can now go up to the next tool. So this is a 51, so that basically now fits onto here. We'll remove that one, go to our second size. Alter our measurement on here to our preset measurement. And then we check it for fit size and it should just fit nice and snug inside our spikes. And that's how we check the size. This is a nice, a nice fit, it's not rattling about. It's a good fit. That's how the end forming is done on the DB killer side of things. There's also just the welding left to do. So next we'll go to the welder to show you how we weld them up. These have already been cut. Rob's already cut these on the saw, on the circular saw. He's also cleaned them and deburred them. Uh, I just have a, a small, simple jig to put them together. Otherwise, I would have to start, sit here standing like this, kind of put them together. So instead, all I do is drop them into here, into there. Tap one side, tap the other, obviously using T, uh, and we just have a DV tube. The next one. Line it up. So what I'm trying to do in here as well is just make sure that these edges are lined up so that it's you get a nice weld no steps and then go through them all same again rinse and repeat you get quite fast at doing this type of thing and we've made a few thousand of them even tens of thousands. Tap them all first, then we get, get them all welded on the welding rotator. It's a lot quicker to do it on the welding rotator. Okay, we're back to the next stage of the DV killers. We've tapped them up, they're ready to weld. So this is the welding rotator, controlled by a foot switch. has an earth clamp on it, so I get my earth return. Basically, these are my parameters. That's the speed. I can set it to go different ways. Uh, forward, reverse, 360, whatever I need to do. So, what we need to do, to do now is weld it. Nice and easy way to do it. Not 
not many left to do. Make any adjustments to the amps you need to do. Obviously the old fashioned way of doing this would be just to do this, but when you've got hundreds of them to do, it's quite, uh, it's quite a lot on your wrist, especially when you've been doing it 20 years, so I find it easy to do it this way. Okay, that's the last of the DB killer tubes. So that's all of them welded up. <coughs> so here we have some of our decibel killers. These particular decibel killers are for our classic range. We basically, when they're sized perfectly for the inside of the spout, you punch a hole in and we put a riveted nut insert in so that we've got a fixture point to hold the baffle in place. So that also acts as our location point in the jig. So I can pop it on the jig there and it's in the correct position. We then get one of the angled tubes, push that into position and the jig holds it in place, ready for me to tack. I tack it in three positions, 120 degrees apart, so here, here and here, and then we can take it off the jig and we'll repeat the process. So this means we can have a repeatability on, on all the DB killers so that we know that they're all exactly the same, they all fit the exhaust in the same way, they've each got the location point at exactly the same place. Just a normal way that we do to repeat parts on a jig to make sure that they stay in tolerance. So three short welds to hold the baffle head in place. We weld all these now, uh, exactly the same way.
4K. If you notice on my welding torch here, I have a, what we call a stubby collet set. I love these. Uh, great little addition to these torches. Makes such a difference being able to get into places, keeping your tungsten quite short as well, keeping your ceramic short. They're also, I also like to keep a, a short back cap on this as well. Uh, it helps when you're welding around things. This is uh, all done on DC, uh, DC electrode negative uh, for stainless steel. Uh, we've got uh, just a very, very small electrode there, which I'm going to change now. Not for any other, any other reason other than what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be tacking up, putting a small tack on our rib nut inserts here. Now the rib nut inserts, because they're slightly proud, what we do is we grind these off, but I like to put a tack of weld on each side because it's a boot and braces thing, because even if we were to dish this uh, DB killer and sink it in and not weld it. I still believe these will probably still move So I like to put a weld on these So I'll use slightly less amps On this one as rather than the other welding On here probably use only about 40 amps on this we'll probably only use about 25 26 so just a small weld top on the bottom just to keep hold it in place and we'll go and do the same thing to those now Okay, the last job we've got to do on this now is just to linish off our proud edge of our rib nut insert, basically because when I put it onto here, it won't go in. So over to the linisher. What I do is I'm just gonna just take the head off it like that. Our weld is still holding the insert on there, push it straight into that point and it fits perfectly. So again, just take the proud edge off the rib nut insert, insert it and it's a really good fit. really important that when we do these we don't take too much off because we don't want them to be flat. All we're doing is just taking the head off the rib nut insert and leaving the, leaving the weld still in place. So as you can see here the welds are still in position. It's just the top of the actual rib nut insert that we've removed.
पर So that's the last job on the classic DB killers. We also have a range of universal DB killers that we also sell, uh, which have different size heads on them. Obviously we don't put a riveted nut insert in those because on a universal one, on it could be anybody's exhaust, uh, all the different companies out there, and they're all obviously gonna put their holes in a different position. So rather than pre-drilling a hole, we don't do that, we leave it for the customer to do because basically we don't want it to be in the wrong place.